I'm Alan, and we're going to talk about uh, the fungus among us and uh, other wild foods right in your neighborhood. And we do have a, uh, a bunch of slides to show you, and we're going to stall by showing you some of those and then uh, take our walk, and we'll see the real thing. That sound good? Yeah. All right, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to do a little rewilding, which is defined anthropologically as the reversal of human domestication. So we're going to question our assumptions today regarding food. Next, this is the articles my mother sends me. <laughs> <laughs> and the poster that the National North American Mycological Association puts out. It says, warning, wild mushrooms can kill you. So I, I took editorial license, <laughs> as you can see. And um, I think the latest one, after I went swimming, when they came to visit in a river, and they were appalled, they sent me, uh, I think, flesh-eating bacteria attacks <laughs> child that swims in river. Yeah. And um, my favorite, though, is when she asked me, so Alan, um, when you go do your like, scavenging thing, are there bears and homeless people? <laughs> <laughs> right. I said, don't worry, Mom, the, the bears are not homeless. <laughs> right. um, so this is, this is it. This is what we're, what we're starting from. Um, and it's where I started from in Miami in uh, the 80s. And so I, um, I went the opposite direction. What's next? And I started to teach. And one of the first places I taught was Stamford Museum. And if you can read the fine print, you would see that Stamford had me make sure everyone signed this note that said that this class on wild mushrooms is not intended to encourage you to eat wild mushrooms. <laughs> Just in case you should not do what uh, they say and do what the instructor that they hired said, that we are not responsible. All right, next. <laughs> what you're about to see is um, a succession of the 12 most common wild foods in our area. Common and desirable to eat. As much as we like top 10 lists, uh, the most valuable thing is to meet what's right in front of you. And I don't know what that's going to be <laughs> when we take a walk. So foragers can't be choosers. But uh, what you get in exchange is uh, the most diverse diet you can imagine. You know? And uh, so if you aim for the magic bullet and you want to know, well, I just want to go for those top 10. And otherwise, you know, it's a recipe for frustration. So over the years, what I learned is uh, I didn't just teach, but I gathered about 400 pounds of wild mushrooms a year for restaurants in our area. And uh, what I found is it pays to diversify, but those top 12 I came up with because they're the ones I find over and over again. So if you do drop off and you, um, meaning leave, <laughs> not die. <laughs> um, then now uh, what you can do is go to my website and it's on that card that I just handed out and you can find that list. So it's 10 mushrooms and 20 plants and those are the ones I recommend you focus on if what you want to do is, is eat stuff for free. And, um, and that makes it very easy because there are thousands of things out there that you could be eating and you don't have to know them all. An expert isn't somebody who, hey, oh my god, I just saw you. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> um, an expert I was about to say is someone who's uh, still alive, and Karen here, who has taken classes with me, haven't you? Or do we just, yes, is still alive. So that makes her an expert. And testify. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have to know everything. You just have to know what you're eating, right? You kind of know what you shouldn't be eating. That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because most of it you can eat. Well, let's see the next slide and uh, decide if that's something we should be eating. What do you think? Uh-huh. Look at her shirt. <laughs> um, I sent that to my mom. I didn't even see this, notice the shirt. She goes, oh, Alan, <laughs> that made like scare people away. I didn't know, know what she was talking about. Yeah. So Alyssa wor actually worked for me for, um, for months. She ate plenty of wild foods and she's still around. So I don't have to worry. It, so that is one to eat, right? That's the first of your top 12. What is that? Morales. Okay. How many people knew that? How many people didn't know that? 
good. See, so we live in, we're blessed not only with a lot of wild foods, but a lot of people that know them. This represents, you know, roughly, you know, 10% of the hundreds of pounds you could pick a year without having to know the several thousand other things we have here that are edible. All right. This is first because it comes out first in the season. That's why we have more else first. And um, you can get a lot of them. So that was a couple of years ago. And not every year is a great year. But um, if you don't have a good year in one year, you have <laughs> a good one the next. Um, yes, next, please. Uh, this was 2011. We did a series of dinners and, um, with uh, Mark Rosenstein. Uh, it was this particular one in April. And that's a ramp standing straight up that we dehydrated. And um, this, so you can impress your friends, even your foodie friends. So that's the second reason I count seven to go, sorry, I wasn't a math <laughs> major, to go foraging. And um, it's free, right? That's number one. Number two, it's, it's interesting. So you get to taste things you never had before, fresher. So that's the foodie reason. Next. And uh, <laughs> yeah, she's pocketing my morels right there. Um, See, everyone wants more else. Okay, right from under my nose. And that was just this year. So there is plenty for everyone, as long as you keep looking. And it's not just mushrooms. I mean, that's my specialty, okay? And, um, but like I said, paid to di diversify. And anyone recognize this one? It's a little less familiar, but yes, it's, it's what they call autumn olive. So that's second on your list. And uh, see how there's a lot of it. So you can gather quite a bit, as you can see. And uh, this is the most uh, high-tech tool that you will probably employ, which is a stick with a hook on it and a loop at the bottom to put around your foot. And that holds the stick down while you strip the branches. Ingenious, right? Probably 30,000-year-old invention, uh, along with the atlatl. And ever since then, we've uh, unfortunately lost lost that technology, all but a handful of people. And I didn't even know you could do that till I um, learned it from another forager. So very simple. You don't have to have the stick, but you could get quite a bit of autumn olive. What's next? Are they savory or sweet? Yeah, you know the, oh yeah. So you can play uh, bocce ball with your autumn olives. <laughs> they are uh, sweet like raspberry and grape crossed, I would say. Mm -hmm. Really neat. And if you take them and you... Um, press them and like you maybe would tomato sauce and put it through something to get rid of the seeds you know after it goes through your uh, mill and you freeze like you ever free a frozen tomato sauce and it separates well the white part of this when it separates is like lychee juice really delicious if you ever had lychee this is an Asian plant and um, I don't know if it's any relation but kind of explains why it would taste so exotic okay who's next anyone recognize that yeah. Uh-huh. So you'll know it more and more because we'll need it more and more because we have a worldwide epidemic of cancer. And this is one of your best cancer, both cures and preventatives. So reishi can look uh, different depending when you find it. These folks are walking around. That's R-E-I-S-H-I. If you get it, I don't know if I have a picture of it earlier. You see the white border? Well. And that white border can be soft enough to eat. And I think in one of these pictures coming up, we'll see that. Tammy is sitting right out there at the Red Moon booth. So you can see, you can get quite a lot of it. All these pictures were taken here locally. I'd say about 20 pounds might do you for the year at, at about five grams a day. That would be a preventative dose. And how do you prepare it? You just boil it. It's really simple. Or you spend hundreds of dollars a month paying for pills that don't work as well. So it's up to you. Next. Right, once again, uh, this was a, a third. This is 100 pounds dried of 300 pounds dried, which is 750 pounds fresh that this man and his daughter picked in one season in our area. So plenty, plenty to go, not just to use, but to sell if you want to. That's up in Barnardsville, and, I, and there's the one. So you can eat it at this stage. I took Andrew Weil out. He, said, he sells this, and he recommends this for cancer. He didn't know that that white part when it's young and fat like that, it could be sliced like, and cooked like steak. That's what it tastes like. Normally, all the other pictures show you a stage at which you just 
cut it up and simmer it. That's what I said. Okay, so most of the time the reishi that they probably are selling out there, you want to simmer. And we have some at the No Taste Like Home, home booth. You can buy some today if you want to bring home, but you can also pick your own, obviously, if you know where to go. And for that, you take a class or you talk to some of these people that already know, are familiar with it. You know, anytime you have a question, just uh, go ahead. Oh, good. That's what you needed to know. Um, anyone know what tree that is? Yeah, because their common reishi grows on hemlock. It's called the hemlock reishi. Very simple. And it eats dead and dying hemlocks, and which most of them are doing right now. So there's going to be a lot more of it. All right, so just be careful because not only do they grow on dead hemlocks, but when they fall uh, across the stream, that's the best place to find them. Okay. And um, if you want to learn more about the medicine of it, this is Jessica, right, who teaches um, at the women's conference every year. And um, another acupuncturist, she was at that same workshop showing off a particularly classic image of reishi that you actually see on old Chinese paintings. And you may not even realize that's reishi, that scroll-shaped pattern. But that's what they're depicting because it was so sacred. It's called the mushroom of immortality. And those of you who have been on walks with me know my wisecrack that I've only been taking it 300 years, so <laughs> I'm not sure if it works. Yep. Next, please. Yeah, all kinds of fun you can have with reishi. Again, it's actually sort of like the fountain of youth, uh, a mushroom. Okay, let's keep going. And this is not reishi, but closely related is artist conch. And it has its own benefits, not just art that you could, this is an etching. You scratch it and that's what happens. Very cool, and very fun. You can also pound this uh, into hats. You can make paper. All these things are medicine. You don't have to eat something to, to get healing from it. And you know, beauty is healing. <laughs>